Welcome back to part 2 of What If Savage Remained as Dooku's Apprentice. Thank you to those of you who watched the first part of this video. To recap what happened in that in the event you haven't seen it, Savage had been taken back to Sereno with Dooku, and Tauzin had thus ordered Ventress to find Maul. On her journey, she manages to recruit the Jedi, who send the Master Quinlan Vos to help her. The duo find Maul stranded on the junklands of Lotho Minor, and placing him under the control of Tauzin, he goes in search of the Sith, as Obi-Wan is about to encounter Qui-Gon or Mortis. The Jedi Master ignited his blade in caution, thinking that the appearance of his old master was some kind of trick by the Sith. Qui-Gon assured him to not be concerned by the emergence of Maul, and Obi-Wan must learn to let go of his death on Naboo, then form an alliance to destroy the bigger threat. As the ghost faded out of his visions, Obi-Wan awoke in the daze, his mind also filled with more information about the truth of the Knight Brothers. Running to the monastery and the father, the Force wielder informs them that the Zabrax would play a big part in the future of the galaxy, but none could influence them more than Anakin. After the Jedi Knight had completed his test to see if he was the Chosen One, the Jedi leave the strange realm, and even though the others had largely forgotten their experiences, the voice of Qui-Gon remained prominent in Obi-Wan's mind. Entering into the quarters of Grandmaster Yoda, the Jedi found this latest development to be disturbing, and asked for the Jedi to consider stepping away from the next mission, and take a retreat back to Mandalore. Obi-Wan is reluctant, and very quickly the Jedi needs someone to go and save Master Evan Peel, captured at the infamous Citadel. At the same time, Obi-Wan received a panicked transmission from Dathomir, revealing that the Separatists had started an attack on their home, and that they needed the help of the Jedi. The Jedi Master knew that the deaths of the Night Sisters could lead to Maul and Savage becoming out of control, so he took a battalion of his 212th Battalion to protect the planet, alongside Master Gallia. Approaching the coordinates of the planet, their radars could only detect the Separatist fleet. Leaving Commander Cody to lead the aerial defence, the Jedi Masters take starfighters to the planet below, and find that General Grievous is marching purposefully to the Night Sister Lair, destroying everything in its path with destroyed army. As legions of clone troopers drop to the red mist from their gunships, Obi-Wan blocked the rampage of Grievous, and the two locked in a ferocious duel. The Jedi Master had been grateful for his latest training in Sorosu, and his subsequent mastery helped to deflect a barrage of strikes in his direction, as he also ordered Master Gallia to reinforce the defences around the perimeter of Tauzin's lair. The Night Sister zombies and warriors proved to be formidable, and as Obi-Wan cut off a couple of the cyborg's limbs, Grievous retreated back into the undergrowth. The waves of droids appeared to be cooling off, but from the bushes, Dooku emerged with the injured cyborg. Tauzin stepped in front of them all to confront the Sith Apprentice, and summoned her sword from the magic of the planet, leaving all of the others to destroy Grievous and the droids. As they tear apart the remainder of the droid army, the Jedi Masters manage to kill Grievous, but sense more darkness heading in their direction. The Knight Brothers of Maul and Savage stepped from their infiltrator, and Obi-Wan could not help but instantly turn to his old foe. With the control of Tauzin, Maul had no aid to Obi-Wan, as he turned to Dooku, and the Sith Apprentice is forced to retreat to his solar sailor. The growth in power of Savage had been evident, and Tauzin ordered him and his brother to complete the defeat of Dooku, as she joined the Jedi in trying to defeat Sidious. Maul remained reluctant to inform the Jedi of the true identity of Darth Sidious, and secretly told his brother that he had hidden the knowledge in a holocron before departing. The brothers had taken the precaution of placing a tracking beam aboard of Dooku's ship, and they end up on the planet of Mandalore, where they were also aware that the Death Watch had been monitoring the activities of Dooku. Landing in the central square of Sundari, the brothers find the Duchess Satine had been taken off of the planet by Jedi protectors, and they find a group of Death Watch combatants suddenly surround them. Igniting their blades, the leader Vistler looked smugly at the Zabraks for falling into his trap, and ordered them to kill these enemies. Savage brutally pushed all of the soldiers out of the square, then used all of his power to push any of the survivors into oblivion, leaving more to fight Vizsla. The Mandalorian warrior utilised his Darksaber to fight off the rampant Maul, and the tools on his Vambraces to help him gain separation, as Dooku walked in on the orders of his master. Dooku demanded for Maul to return his apprentice back to him, but the Zabrak claimed that Savage had never been in Dooku's possession, always being under the control of Tauzin, as the group then began their battle. That is if a part 2 of what if Savage remained as Dooku's apprentice. 
If you'd like to see a part 3 soon, please like this video, turn on the notification bell, click that subscribe button on this channel, as well as on my other channel while here films. And as always, leave a comment on what if you'd all like to see next, and how I can improve my videos. Thank you all very much for watching, and see you next time.